Double Driver's Garage, I'm Scott. Uh, we're back in my garage and today I'm working on my 1990 Chevy K1500 Extra Cab plumber's truck. Um, I bought this last August and uh, what I'm doing, it's my daily driver. I bought it as a winter beater. Uh, as you can see it's already got some rust on it. It has like 260,000 miles on it. It has the to a ubiquitous 350 TBI gutless wonder that it is, but it still runs fine. Um, it's got some issues though. Um, it's got it's been popping fuses for the ECM while driving on the freeway, and um, which is not cool when you're doing 75 miles an hour and the engine just shuts off. Um, though uh, it was pretty amazing that the last time I did it, I was doing about 75 miles an hour in a high headwind, and it still rolled more than a half a mile in neutral. Uh, but anyway, what I'm trying to figure out, and I'll show you here in just a second, is um, I'm trying to figure out some wiring issues. As a $1,000 truck, you, you know what you're getting. $1,000 truck problems. So why don't I do this? I'm going to flip this camera around and show you what I'm working on. Uh, just one second. This is what I'm working on, is this, I found this, this was just shoved up in the wiring above the, fu uh, above the fuse blocks, uh, actually a, f a fuse junction. It's a, uh, what appears to be a GM factory alarm box brain, as you can see. It has the wiring, telling you what all the wires do, where the terminals are, and all that. And this was the mess that it was attached to. And I don't know if it was original to the truck. The alarm box says right there it's a 3 of 93. So, um, and this little truck's a 1990. So it's, it's, it's either somebody replaced it or tried to add one to it. I think they added one to it because there is some janky ass wiring going on here. As you can see, some of the terminals are been just taped off. The rest of them have the crappy terminals one of them actually broke when i unplugged it as you can see here's one that's unplugged in the other end now what does this do to the way my truck runs uh apparently nothing the way it runs watch this okay, runs fine doesn't need this at all to run i don't have a key fob and um, turn this back off. The only thing it doesn't do is it doesn't operate the door locks. As you can see, I'm messing with the door lock button on this door, and you can't see nothing happening on that door. Um, the door lock actuator on this side doesn't work. Um, the actuator does work, it's just unplugged. Um, the rod, the linkage rod that goes from from the door actuator motor over to the door actual lock on the locking mechanism on the door latch is pulled out, and I don't feel like tearing the door apart to get to it um, right now. So anyway, um, what I'm going to do today is try to figure this out and pull out whatever I don't need. And you can see it's got this over here. They ran one of the wires and it looks like they split a wire here. Um, I'm not really sure what the black one is. I'll have to figure out what they did. And then I'm just going to disconnect it. And this is the original wires. Um, oops, this is the original wires for the speaker or for the original stereo. The other thing I'm going to try to do is figure out um, while I'm under here try to figure out why the dash um i know why the um the, the check engine light doesn't work um it doesn't come on at all anymore it's supposed to be that second one in the, the top one there in the middle by the fuel gauge so you can turn the key on nothing happens like it's supposed to 
I I had the uh, tire engine harness out and um, or the engine dash cluster out, and apparently it was either on so long and ignored that it melted the light socket um, that it sits in, or the it just got overheated and for some reason some bad electrical issues probably from that mess down there. Um, what I'm going to do uh, is this. Uh, I'm going to find the wire to it and see if I can re uh, just hook up a, a different light. The reason being is the uh, gauge cluster, the back of the gauge cluster, which you can't see, is a circuit board. And the light so the socket, light socket is actually soldered into the circuit board. So either I have to place the entire gauge cluster circuit board with another one out of a salvage yard or um, just put a different light somewhere else that just, you know, a little, like an LED light somewhere. Anyway, um, that's what we're going to do today. Okay, um, the first thing we need to start with is tools that you use for uh, electrical um, diagnosis and repair. Diagnosis. Uh, you cannot live without a test light. This is a, your typical test light. Has a little light bulb inside of it, pointed in to stab your finger with. This is the clamp side. You 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 clamp on a negative um, side, which is always the most difficult. Is to find a good clean negative uh, ground to actually clamp on, and then you you poke around with this end until the light comes on to know where your circuit breaks and your circuit starts, uh, where you actually have electricity flow and where it does where it doesn't. The second one is. Um, Good pair of wire cutters, oh, and uh, and this is actually a combination of wire cutters and crimpers. I use it for both. Um, you can get different ones. Um, I have another pair of wire cutters around here somewhere. Um, here, this is another one. Um, though I don't use this one very much anymore. It doesn't cut very thick wire. Um, it's mostly just good for cutting zip ties. All right. So, the other thing you want is a good pair of wire shivers. Now, there are different versions of them out there. I have um, another pair somewhere around here. This one I bought recently. It's, I paid about 25 bucks for this at a, a tool guy. Uh, at a car show I go to all the time. He always has a bunch of tools and I get certain things from him, certain supplies like wire brushes and stuff. And I bought this from him. And what it does is just, uh, as you can see up at the top there, the two teeth like that. You stick the wire in from the left. How far you want it stripped off. You can adjust it with that little clear plastic thing. And then you just pull it apart and it, and it, and it strips the wire off. And this one does almost any size gauge uh, that'll fit in there, which is cool. Um, and then these are these are more expensive. These I paid up probably thirty bucks at a home store like Home Depot or um, Menards um, in their electrical department. Uh, I don't like using other ones. Um, if you use those crappy one, one tool does all. And you do a lot of electrical work, you'll find that you want to get better tools. If you just want to have something to keep in your toolbox, just to get you down the road, which we have. Hang on a second. <coughs> this here, this thing here, is a um, my little toolbox that... I keep in my, I take on my boat because it's actually water resistant. You know, it's like it's got a rubber seal on it, and and this I've had this thing forever, and I use this thing forever for wire stripping and crimping, and all it good it's good for is giving you hand cramps after a while uh, if you use it a lot, um, but it does a job in a pinch if you need to. So for now, it got. Demoted from primary use when I bought my better tools to, um, to just to be an emergency, my emergency little emergency tool kit that I keep in my boat when I go boating. Anyway, 
So what I'm doing now, well, I got my test light, and I reconnected these this wire here uh, temporarily. I wasn't going to recrimp it with one of these crappy things. I'm, what I'm trying to do now is figure out what wire does what. Um, the back of the instructions say the blue wire, the light blue wire and the light blue with the red wire are lock switch and lock motor. And it's actually one is up and one is down is what I'm finding. So watch this. So I put this in there. That, hold it in there. Hit the lock, door lock switch on the door and you can see. You can see the light coming on. Okay. That's locking. It doesn't do anything when I'm unlocking. So, we have the other one here, which is... I think they got them backwards. <laughs> Figures. <laughs> Look at this. As you can see here, this is the wire coming out of the out of the alarm box. It's a red wire, a blue wire with a red stripe going into a solid blue wire. And this solid blue wire goes into a blue light blue wire with a red stripe. Yeah, they wired them backwards. Not that it matters really. I mean, all you're doing is one's up, one's down, whatever. And the switches are working correctly up and down, so who cares? Um, anyway, but to go back to it, testing it, this other wire coming out. That's down. That means locking on this door on this car going down means you're locking the key. Oops. Yeah. So these are lock these are going to locking the doors, the door locks, actuators. And the orange wire is the power wire going in. This is the main power feed, which is connected to the battery. So, check it with the fuse. See, the fuse is good. And, and the key's off, so it's got power to it all the time, which door locks typically do, unless the fuse is blown out. This one here, um, it's giving me a zap. Okay, these are unlock, see, unlock, and unlock. Let's replace this, I'm probably going to have to run a relay. I don't think I want to just jump the wires together. Unless this works by taking the fuse out. Yep. So, door locks work. Whether or not the... Um, whether or not the... Uh, it has power going in that fuse. So, to that plug. So, what I'm going to do is simple. It's really simple at this point. I'm going to connect this blue wire to this blue wire, connect them together, and um, and then I'm going to connect the black wires together. I'm going to cut them out, of the, cut them out, cut them off this, this this plug, and just connect these two wires together and these two blue wires together, and uh, that should bypass this thing for door locks, and I'll still have the functioning door locks. We'll see what happens then. Camera fell over. Um, hang on one second. There we go. I'm back. So, what I'm going to do is connect the two blue wires together. And a lot of people will tell you there's a million ways, different ways, and ideas on how to do it. I'm going to show you how I do it. I've been doing it this way for years. And it doesn't include soldering. So, I found that soldering basically overheats the wiring and reduces the continuity of wiring, especially this thinner gauge stuff. 
and that's used in automobiles, which is typically anywhere between 10 to 18 gauge, mostly in automobiles. And if it's a thin, really thin stuff, it really has a problem. So the first thing I do is I take a piece of heat shrink. This is like a heat shrink stuff I get. I, I, I get this at like Menards. I can get it in a roll. It's pretty, probably five bucks of it. I use quite a bit of it, so I buy it in a roll. <laughs> you can also buy it in um, pre-cut lengths too, but I'd rather cut my own lengths. So I cut about an inch or two an inch. Um, and the next thing I do is I take these, which are, let me get them in there so you can see it. And um, there you go. These are silage connectors, but they're not the plastic covered pieces of crap like these that you find at every auto parts store. Don't use these. Uh, if you're going to use these, I buy I buy these when I can't get these, and then I heat and cut the stuff off, the plastic coating off, and do this. So, I'm sure the internet experts are going to tell you how wrong I am doing it this way. I don't care. Internet experts are a dime a dozen. <sighs> And they can do it however they want, the way, the way they want. And seeing how I've seen some of the disasters of wiring under, under the hood of cars. And the messes that they make. People that can claim they're internet experts aren't in real life. Okay, so the two wires are crimped together like that. And then slide... The, slide the heat shrink over, use your little butane torch, oops, let me turn it up, to shrink, okay. and you're done, simple, easy, doesn't take forever, and you don't have to be an expert with soldering iron to get it done right. And it'll last as long as you want it to be in the car. I have some of these repairs in cars that I've driven 100,000 miles after repairing it, and wiring stereos. And um, I don't ever have an issue. So I'll do the other one. I have my other one over here. And I always like to find the seam. You see the seam here? There's a little seam. And then take the little jaws, the tooth jaws, there, see the little tooth jaws there? Put it on the seam, like so. So it's lined up on the seam. And that's where I do my first crimp. What I like about these red ones that are really, with the long handles, it gives you a lot of leverage. So you don't have to have forearms like Popeye to get a good, you know, see? It's not. It's never going to come off. And then do the other side. That. You see. Good, good squeeze one way, and then I turn it in ninety, and then I put it in there and finish it off. So it's nice and tight. It's never going to come out, and the heat shrink protects it. It also, the heat shrink also prevents, helps it from coming out, ever coming out again. Oh. And, and you gotta be careful with on this, is not to burn yourself with your butane torch. This, this is a cheap little plastic one I bought a few years ago. I like it. And it cost me $15. And you can refill it, which is cool. And I use it all the time, and it fits in my toolbox for my electrical stuff. Yeah. So, okay. Now the door locks are still working, and I haven't burned the truck down yet. So, on to the next. Okay. So, what's next is the other plug that was on the box. See, it had the big box here. The other plug, this is it here. Figuring out where these wires went, and let me zoom in a bit. Zooming, figuring out where these wires go, 
and cutting them back out and you can see how they didn't use some of the wiring wires on it and because this has got power to it and so does this so you want to we want we don't want those connect we want it we don't just want to cut the wire and tape it up i mean you could but it's not really safe we want to figure out where they tapped into it if they tapped into something if they did something like this up here let me show you see how they tapped into this here this blue wire this blue wire if you follow it goes down and ends up in the end of here okay the other thing we have it's hard to see um, where is it okay there um, there's an orange a yellow and a green wire and a bolt on a ground there they come over the top up here and they end up in this bundle here so somebody had a bright idea of having an orange wire for power and an orange wire for ground oh that's and then the other the pink wire here and this yellow wire my next finger here are grounds so we can I just unbolt the ground and then we'll, we can get rid of those those are simple we'll do those first okay I'll be right all right, so what I did first is I got the ground unbolted, the two grounds. I see here, they were unbolted. I bolted them from the from the dash here, and I cut this orange wire, which was connected. Let me back the camera up so you can see here, which connected to these two fusible links. This power wire goes over to the dash. We'll trace that here in a second. But now I have. Look at that two pretty decent nice fusible links cool keep those use them for something else all right um the next thing we know already is this here which is tapped into a black wire underneath the dash coming uh, which goes up through the steering column here um I'm not sure what it is black is generally ground so um i'm gonna figure that out here in a minute but I'm going to cut this, this blue piece of crap out to, to get the blue wire out and then cut these wires, uh, splice these two wires back together correctly. That way I don't have a problem. And then that just leaves following where the pink wire goes, the orange wire goes, and these two white wires go somewhere. And I'm going to figure those two out. And that's what I'm going to be doing right now. And, and uh, so it's a little bit hard to figure out. I'll show you in a minute here when I do figure out where they're going here. Well, it didn't take long to figure out where the pink and orange wires ended up. Um, this is where they connected them into the original um, dash harness. And um, I already know that the red wire here, which runs into the orange wire, was feeding power to the, to the alarm box is hot all the time so I gotta be careful with that I haven't tested this one yet to see if it's um see if this one's hot all the time or just ignition on but I will I will cut those out and put in proper connectors and these three these three wires here so I know what those I haven't figured out where the wire white wires go yet so I'll do these three first and then figure out the white wires next so fix these problems just like I did the other two I'm gonna connect them just like this that way they're not we're gonna have an issue again so uh, hang on okay so I got these wires connected back to where they were originally the black wire the pink wire and the red wire the red wire is most likely the most uh, uh, main power lead for the uh, for the whole dashboard here so you, you want to make sure that that's good I'm gonna tape it extra tape over the over the soldering shrink wrap just in case <coughs> and just to double check to make sure everything you're doing so truck runs now without the alarm box connected at all the most irritating white noise sound every time I turn the key on. Okay, 
So, which leaves us with these two white wires. And these are actually, if, you look, if we look at the back, one of the white wires is the trigger wire for the alarm. And the other white wire is uh, uh, for illumination. Um, not sure which is which. Let's see here. All right, the dash lights still work. So, I don't know what these do. And the dome lights are on, as you can see. Because the door is open. So if I push the door button, they go out. So these wires, I don't know what they do. Uh, I'm going to have to figure out where they're connected and get them disconnected. Because they don't need to be doing anything right now. Um, but I don't want to leave them hanging. Or just tape and cub bundle the ends unless I have to. If I have to take half the dash apart to get to them, um, then I might end up doing that. But... I'll figure out where they're going. They're probably going up here in the side of the kick panel here. Up here. Because um, I, can, I can hear them when I pull on them. I think they're going to that. They're going to that button. So, um, they're going to the dome light uh, trigger button on the, on the door jam. So, what I'm going to do is probably end up cutting these out since GM's uh, GM uh, dome light systems uh, have power going to them all the time and the the ground uh, is closed when you on the door buttons uh, opposite of Ford's Ford's are the up opposite they connect it you can when you open the door you complete the circuit for the positive side on GM's it's the negative side so <laughs> um, anyway, um, we'll continue. In here, you can you can see where they connected it. With there's a lot of electrical tape in there in that hole. Um, oops. So pull this out a bit. Yeah. So. They connected the electrical wire with, well, I don't know if I'm going to get these out. These don't have any juice going to them at all, these two white wires. Well, not by the test light, at least. So, they're negative. So, if they touch something metal, they're not going to short out anything. But Anyway, um, but they could turn on the dome light. So, um, anyway, uh, I'm going to continue working on this and try to figure it out. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to get to reach those without going all the way up to the dash, which I might have to do. Well, we ended up pulling out of the truck. Um, in my situation, it just didn't do anything. Uh, if you don't, I didn't have an alarm key when I bought this truck. Heck, I didn't even have a door key when I bought this truck. Um, all I had was the ignition key and the key to the, uh, the toolbox is on the back. Um, one other note, nice thing I figured out. Uh, I pulled this little bastard out of here. This is the thing that was making all that damn noise when I turned the key on. So watch when I turn the key on now. Nothing. The key's not beeping at me because the door's open. It's not beeping at me because the lights are on. Whoever came up with this is a sadistic little shit. And I like to kill him. Oh, look. It's made in Canada. Figures. The only people that live in the frozen tundra can come up with something as crap as that. Anyway, I pulled it out. doesn't seem to affect the vehicle, so I'm going to throw it away with the rest of the garbage that doesn't work in this damn truck. Um, and then uh, work on a couple other things on the truck that I'm not going to talk about right now. Just stuff, stereo stuff, make sure my wiring for my stereo works good and all that kind of stuff. I'll show you that later.